another Sega Dreamcast performance upgrade video. One of the very first things you're going to want to take into consideration is your ability to save the game if you'd like to be able to play from beginning to end. And I added a nifty addition here on your home menu. You just simply add it as a game. You have VMU for Virtual Memory Unit. And you'll be able to access, modify, and format the memory cards accordingly for use with the core on the mini. And obviously you're going to need this for a game such as Fantasy Star Online V1 and V2 due to the online component. But I'm going to show you the process in which you have to do this in order to uh, modify the cards. Once you're in, you're going to click File. And the first time you do this initially, the memory cards will have zero free blocks and you have a red X, much akin to the X-Men Battle Room. I'm going to click the first memory card right here. And I'm going to format it. Delete all memory reset. Yes. Select an emoji um, or emoticon, whatever we would call it back in 1999. Uh, we do not have a mad monkey, but I'll pick the happy monkey instead for now until we hack in a mad monkey. And I'll select the color. Select again. Confirm. Then click OK one more time. Now I have four fresh memory cards to work with. And I have one that I've already been using with 105 free memory blocks. I can go in here and uh, modify the contents if I'd like to micromanage and free up some space. Uh, I'll clear the Mr. Driller one. Delete. Okay, now I have 117 free blocks. Now I'm going to exit back to the main user interface and we're going to check out some games. In my very first Sega Dreamcast test video, I was playing games in a decent frame per second, but games would always crash. One to two minutes in each and every time. And in the second test, uh, games would freeze, pause, hesitate, and lag, and I'd have time to make a sandwich, take a bathroom break, drink a beer or two. But guess what, guys and gals, with the next update, you're not going to have to worry about C7 crashes and game anymore. You're simply going to load the game up if it works and it is a proper, uh, properly supported. You're going to be able to play it from beginning to end and even save it in game. So there aren't going to be as many uh, crumbs from your sandwiches. You're only going to have loose change from the friends, loved ones, relatives, and family members that come over and play the game. And I did access memory card in port A1, so we're good to go on that. This game is much more of a seamless experience now. We're going to do arcade mode, which we saw quite a few lags, pauses, hesitations, and such in the previous test examples. But it's run so much better now. I'm going to pick Wolverine as the starter character. Then, uh, Jill from Resident Evil. And, uh, Strider Hyraiu, of course. Much, much better. I mean, the music is much more presentable. So let's check this out here. As mentioned before, I've always been a big fighting fan. I love games such as Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, Killer Instinct, and especially Tekken and Soul Calibur. Tekken and Soul Calibur are where my lifeblood is as far as fighting games are concerned. But one thing I really do appreciate about games like these are when you have characters such as Wolverine, Spider-Man, Mega Man, and such, characters that you wouldn't necessarily know from the get-go, you can try out the moveset from characters such as Ryu, Zangief, Dowsum, Chun-Li, and so on, and have a good chance of some of the movesets being quite similar. Very, very cool stuff here. But one thing i like to mention is uh, games in general on the core are going to have minor or two major graphical glitches on the case-by-case -case scenario, but for what's worth, this game runs incredibly nicely, and the graphical glitches in the background are very, very, uh, not too detracting. And for the record, the other custom OST that we are currently working on and integrating into MAME 2003 Extreme is Marvel vs. Capcom 1 Arcade. I put a few hours into getting all the music together, and GP Star is currently working on coding it in. And I'm going to do a test video of it probably within a week or two. It'll be a great, great custom OST for sure. But let's beat this round one here. And yes, you're going to be able to basically do two-player mode activate and not have to worry about the game freezing, pausing, or hesitating on you anymore. It's running incredibly well now. <laughs> Very cool stuff. 
This is definitely the pinnacle of uh, the Capcom fighting games as far as I'm concerned. Because they had Marvel vs. X-Men and then uh, X-Men Children of the Atom. I mean, great, great stuff here. And this is definitely a culmination of all the previous crossover efforts that Capcom has had with their various games. And that was until they had Marvel vs. Uh, Capcom 3 Ultimate and Fate of the Children and such. Finisher! And yes, we'd always get a C7 error by the time we get done with the first round in the previous releases, but we can play it without any issue whatsoever now. Cool, cool stuff. But we're going to move on to some more games, and another thing I'd like to really uh, mention is there's a great, great little-known gem of a game on Super Nintendo called X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, and guess what? It's essentially a side-scrolling action platformer game. Uh, made by Capcom, you can use various X-Men characters such as Psylocke, Gambit, uh, Cyclops, and of course Wolverine. And you have Street Fighter style moves. I'm going to show this for a brief uh, moment here. But yes, when I was originally playing this game many, many years ago, I was reading the manual, which I normally do not do when, with a game. I simply just play the game, but I happened to check out the manual. And I noticed that the moveset for some of the characters was uh, straight out of the School of Street Fighter 2 movesets. So I can play this game and start doing uh, Street Fighter moves. I'm going to pick Wolverine. And I'll do one of Ryo's moves, the uh, uppercut move. And it'll be the same exact move. Forward, down forward, and punch. Look at that. I can do the uppercut that Ryu has. A very cool game, and definitely worth checking out if you've never heard of this game before. I mean, we all know about the X Men games. I don't know, uh, Mega Drive Second Chances, but this is a great little known gem of a game, well worth your time. <laughs> Very cool stuff. But I'm going to move on to some more Dreamcast games. Again, that's X-Men Mutant Apocalypse. And I'm surprised about uh, how many people are unaware of that game, because it is really one of the most incredible games you can play on Super Nintendo without a doubt. But more Dreamcast. And I'm a big, big shmup fan, so we're going to check out... Uh, Oh, actually, we'll do racing first. We're going to do Hydro Thunder. But I'm going to do a shmup game after this. But how many of you are, are familiar with games such as Wave Race and RC to Go? It seems like they have the same announcer for all three of these games. I mean, Hydro Thunder, Wave Race, RC to Go. It's always like the same European announcer. But I love all three games. I'm a big racing game fan. And when the Dreamcast came out in 1999, on September 9th, uh, there were actually already games on the store shelves, such as Hydro Thunder, NFL 2K, Soul Calibur, Blue Stinger, and so on. I mean, you can buy games an entire week or two in advance. Hi, bro! And the Hydro Thunder glitched out Choose there, but you know what I mean there. I'm going to pick uh, Lost Island. Lost Island! Hydro Thunder! Wonder what that guy's up to nowadays. <laughs> Three, two, one, go, go, a great, great game. One of my favorite racing games. There are minor graphical defects, as you can see. And of course, I'm in 16th place right now, but you have to have first place in order to beat the stage. Shortcut activate. Of course, I can go into first-person mode and minimize the graphical defects. I'm going to do my best to try to get uh, first place, or, or at least second place. But out of the three different versions of Hydro Thunder that run on the mini, the PlayStation 1 version, the Nintendo 64 version, and the Dreamcast version, this one actually runs the best out of the bunch. I also have this on uh, Midway Arcade Treasures Volume 3. There are three volumes. The first two volumes have games such as Mortal Kombat, 720, Paperboy, Robotron, Gauntlet. The third volume has games such as uh, 
Hydro Thunder, which is actually the Dreamcast version. San Francisco Rush 2049, which is the Dreamcast version. Race Driving, and uh, a few other great racing games. I mean, I love all three volumes. They're on PlayStation 2. And they also released the Midway uh, Collection on PlayStation 3. And by that point, uh, Midway went bankrupt, and another company bought them out. Warner Brothers bought them out. And they re-released the collection, kind of discreetly because it wasn't well known. They released it on um, PlayStation 4 under the LEGO Dimensions uh, moniker as a DLC content, like a Midway Arcade Pack. Oh no. Okay, I don't think I'm going to get first place. I'm going to end up getting uh, second place here, most likely. When I first bought this game in the system in 1999, yes, Prince predicted the awesomeness of Dreamcast way, way in advance with 1999. Second place, come on. I got this. Maybe another time or two I'll be able to get first place, but in any case, when I bought the system in 1999, um, everybody in the store was like, uh, don't, doesn't anybody want to buy Final Fantasy? Yes, there's a great, great Final Fantasy game that came out on that day as well. So I was able to get a Final Fantasy game as well as the Sega Dreamcast. I already had my games because I bought them a whole week in advance. I mean, I bought Hydro Thunder the moment it popped into the store, and it's still one of my beloved favorites for the system. I actually play this game on my phone nowadays. I mean, I have this same core, the Recast Core, on my phone, and I play it with a controller, a Bluetooth controller. But we're going to check out a shmup game now because uh, when I used to go to Walmart in the bargain bins uh, many years ago, I'd find games such as Ikaruga and Rez. And Rez is a fantastic game that really didn't get notoriety when it came out. It was uh, 5 to $10 in bargain bins because it just did not sell well. I mean, it fell off of store shelves right into the bargain bins right from the get-go. And many years later, it, it gained kind of a quite, uh, call following and sold for quite a, an exponential amount of money on eBay along with Ikaruga. But I was able to pick up Ikaruga and Rez for Dreamcast, and I picked up Ikaruga for GameCube and uh, Dreamcast as well. I mean, they're both incredible games and far ahead of their time as far as us shmups are concerned. And of course they released Rez on PlayStation 4 uh, recently, and they did a great job of it. Not to say right now, if any of you have any epileptic seizure tendencies, uh, and are unsettled by uh, flashing displays of colors, Maybe go take a quick bath and break, make a sandwich, or drink a beer for the next minute or two, and then come back and enjoy the rest of the video. But this is a great, great game. It's kind of a hybrid of Panzer Dragoon uh, with a lock-on targeting system, as well as a little bit of a music rhythm game. And I find this an incredibly cool hybrid combo. And for a record, I'm a big, big fan of Panzer Dragoon. And I'm going to be showing a, a newer Panzer Dragoon game in one of my future videos in the next few days or so. This doesn't run full speed, but it's still incredibly fun to play, and uh, almost reminds me of like a Tron 2.0 shmup game. And it's very, very cool because as you lock onto enemies and shoot them, you get a whole cacophony of sound effects and great musical interludes, and they progress to great, great, awesome proportions as you get more and more enemies on screen later on in the game. But yes, as you lock on enemies and uh, release your attack and such, you get some really cool sound effects. If you have any chance of playing this on another system, such as a real Dreamcast, or on your PlayStation 4 such, definitely check it out, because this is really a cool game. And I have this on my uh, Xbox 360 as well. And I believe it's also a backwards compatible title on Xbox One. But I was very, very happy. I mean, I love having the games on both my Sony systems and my Xbox systems. I mean, I'm not a fanboy of any one over the other. I love having games on both formats, if at all possible. And speaking of Hydro Thunder, um, they also have a great Hydro Thunder Hurricane game, which is only on 360, as well as backwards compatible and downloadable on Xbox One. Hydro Thunder Hurricane, great, great game. Tremendous effort. I love upgraded reboot games. But yes, this game gets much, much cooler as time goes on, and it's just a really, really cool game. I wouldn't call it incredibly challenging, but it's definitely the type of game where you can get better and better and get it's more of a scoring system, multiplier, and you try to get 
as high of a score as you can throughout the course of the game. But we're going to check out some more games. Uh, then I'm going to do a brief tutorial on how to appropriately add Dreamcast games for use on a mini. But I'm going to be playing one of my favorite PlayStation, uh, not PlayStation, Dreamcast games of them all. Which is actually what I consider one of the very first small MMORPG online games. It's uh, Fantasy Star Online V2. And when you got this game, you would have a hunter's license that came with the game, which had a serial and access key. And you could play it online. And uh, this is kind of a little funny story here. When I was, uh, I used to play around with code breaker codes for Fantasy Star Online V1. And uh, again, a little bit of, uh, I was with the modern community back then. I mean, code breaker and Barberry ASDFN. And if you know any of those characters at all. But uh, we worked on games such as Fantasy Star Online V1 and uh, several other online Dreamcast games and such. And they even had a GSCCC a Code Breaker site that I helped out with doing some codes and such. I submitted some codes and we all worked together. But as of right now, um, this game required a hunter's license to get online. And I was messing around with the Code Breaker before I even played this game offline. Then when I started playing it online, I got banned from the get-go because I had items that were in the code that were not yet unlocked. And I had them in my immediate inventory, and when I went online, I hit Sega's checkpoint, and I ended up getting banned on day one, so I was completely banned. We worked out a server bypass. We did our own host server, much akin to the NetPlay servers that we use uh, host-to-host on the computers for the SNES Mini and NES Mini uh, NetPlay and such. So yes, we'd be able to play online using our own host server and such, but right now I'm going to be playing offline. It would take a little bit of work to try to get an online mode going for Fantasy Star Online on the mini, obviously. But it'd be incredibly cool being able to come out here and playing with three other people online. That'd be so awesome. But in any case, I used the host server bypass method from the PC. And I was able to reroute past the second checkpoint and make it right past through their, uh, their security check. And I could have banned items in my inventory and go online. There are so many cool weapons, like you had uh, weapons straight out of the Sonic the Hedgehog games and such. But if you like games such as Gauntlet Legends, you'll definitely appreciate a game like this. Because it has that same uh, type of adventure uh, feel to it. And it's, it's not quite like the original Fancy Star uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. that were on Sega Master System and Sega Genesis, aka Mega Drive. But uh, it had many elements and stuff from it. Such as the stats and level up systems, items, weapons, and so on. But the general gameplay is definitely not turn based, it is more straightforward hack and slash fair. But you have a little bit of a uh, town in the overworld here. The hub, should I call it. Now we see the game's not run to full speed, but I'm still very happy, very, very happy to be able to run this on a mini. We have a hospital, we can go there, buy items to heal. We have a, a level where we can go and select the levels from. We have a hunter's guild where we can go sell and buy stuff. But I'm going to go to the uh, underworld now and go to one of the levels. And I also have this game on my uh, GameCube. I have the updated version of this which has Fancy Star Online V1, V2 and additional levels. I have the plus version of it which is quite a rarity nowadays and usually sells for about $100 or so on eBay. I mean. They did a limited release of it for some odd reason or another, but it was an incredibly cool game, nonetheless. Okay, let's check out this awesomeness here. And my character is only level 1, so I'm very, very weak right now. I have a light and a strong attack. I wouldn't even attempt to use my strong attack yet because my accuracy is so low, incredibly low, that I've missed each and every time. See, my accuracy is low right now. But you level up pretty quick. You might also notice that uh, little orb flying around me. It looks like an Opa from uh, Fantasy Zone. It really is a little uh, homage to the game series. And it levels up and has its own stats accordingly. It's really cool. You can select many different types of characters in this game. A little bit like in Gauntlet where you can pick the, the warrior and the elf and the wizard and such. You have characters in this game that all have their various abilities. I have a ranger right now, and I'm able to use guns as my main forte. Oh no. 
Yes, these enemies are more powerful than they need to be for a level one character. I'm gonna take out a couple of them. But you can play as robots, hunters, wizards, and rangers. And I'm like I said, I'm picking a ranger character because I want to be able to use projectile weapons for right now. And you also have magic abilities and such depending on your character. I mean, obviously if you use a robot, you cannot use any magic whatsoever. But if you use a hunter, you can use minimal magic. And obviously if you use a wizard, magic would be your main forte along with a, a baton wand and such. This what this character here is one of my favorite uh, characters because there's actually a weapon you can get called the Heaven Punisher. And you can basically have beams of uh, light come down from a satellite orbiting the planet and just incinerate enemies on contact. Really incredibly cool. And there's a little bit of an RNG uh, random number generator system where you can get rare loot as you play throughout the game. Like double sabers, straight out of Star Wars, uh, Darth Maul and such. And I'm going to definitely in one of the next few days, I'm going to show the full... Uh, full speed version of this running on my GameCube because it is still an incredible game. And this does have an incredibly cool boss. I mean, you can play uh, against a really, really cool first boss. I'm not going to show or talk about the boss yet. I'm just going to do it in a video within the next few days. And maybe a uh, horror stream against the video because this is yet another game with monsters, of course. But we're going to move on to another test game. Um, I'm a big fan of Tony Hawk. I mean, from the moment I got Tony Hawk 1 on PlayStation 1. And jumped to Dead at Warehouse and her Primus playing and the Dead Milkman. I was absolutely hooked for an entire weekend. I could not stop playing the game. And uh, sure enough, as you get through the levels, you go to a shopping mall. You're in the mountains. I mean, uh, mountains, that's insane. Going from a warehouse to mountains. But there's another game on Dreamcast which is very, very similar. Kind of a future spirited uh, successor to Tony Hawk called Trick Style. And this is a truly underrated gem of a game. One of my favorites on the system. Trick Style. This is another game I bought from the get-go and not many people are aware of this game, but it is such a cool game. I've always been a big fan of it. You start out in a little bit of a warehouse style scenario. I mean, you're almost going around on Back to the Future style hoverboards, but once you pass the initial test phase, you get into levels which are very akin to some of the great, great Tony Hawk levels. And uh, obviously after Tony Hawk 1 and 2, the series won a little bit downhill. But I still tried all the games out throughout the years. Even the Wii version, which I still have. But Tony Hawk 1 and 2 are by far the best in the series and they will be untouchable. I mean, you just simply cannot touch them. That'd be like if they brought back another Crazy Taxi. They still would not hold up to the candle of the original Crazy Taxi 1 and 2 with great bands such as Offspring in them. You need the original soundtrack for games like that. But we'll start off this game which is another great game that runs near full speed and I'm very very happy with this because this is one of my favorite games. And we're starting out in the Velotrome and we do a little bit of a train mission before we get to the forte of the main mission. I'll pick the Harley Quinn looking like female here. And uh, Suicide Squad, the animated movie, is a fantastic movie. The Hell to Pay Suicide Squad movie. Really, really cool. Oh, I could have skipped training. Maybe I should have skipped it. <laughs> but I'll do it for a moment here. Jump training. I have to go around and find uh, six orbiting globes within the context of this level. Very, very cool uh, trance style soundtrack. Uh, I'm gonna restart, uh, actually quit current game. I'm gonna try to quit the training mode. Let's try this one more time and I'm gonna skip the training this time. And I love being able to skip training the games because when I play games such as Driver, where I'm stuck in the garage and unable to skip the training, it's incredibly frustrating. I love to be able to just go into the game and have the option to come back to it and try training later. Okay, let's check this out. Skip training. 
Now I can go to the real game. Well, like a little bit of a Crash Bandicoot style level there. The little hub where I can select the different levels, but yes, I would highly recommend trying out this game. It is such a cool game. <laughs> And obviously you can do stunts like grinding, like you would do in the Tony Hawk game. And I'd be very happy to be able to get the core running even faster, because games like this would definitely benefit. I went the wrong direction there. You got the little arrows like you typically have in your wipeout games, which of course I just missed a few of. I'm a little rusty on this game, it's been a little while, forgive me. Oh jeez. Six plays, I think I can do a little bit better than six plays, let's do this. I need at least second place like I did with uh, Hydro Thunder. Of course, I missed the uh, luge completely. <laughs> That'd be incredibly cool being able to do that. Third place, I can catch up now. I need at least second place. Come on, first place, I can do this. One more to go. There we go, jump airtime. Of course, <laughs> what a failure there. I was thinking I was gonna have to break right to the glass there, obviously not. I lost uh, three places there, and now I'm in fourth place. Second place, okay.